those most of whom don't know. So we give God praise and honor and worship tonight. I want to thank you, Pastor um, Chin, for inviting me to share um, in this fellowship and also to share in the ministry of the word. I sincerely ask that you all pray tonight that the Lord will have me to say something that will be of help to his people. The word of God says it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says God. It's been a while, Pastor Chin, that we have not seen each other physically. Yes, sir. But <laughs> I thank God for the little time that I would have had an encounter with you and whatever little impact I might have had on your life. To God be all the glory and all the praise. Praise God. So let's just all just wherever you are right now, just lift up your hands and just says and just glorify God. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands right now and just glorify God. Father, we thank you. We praise you, we honor you, we glorify you. We bless you tonight. We thank you that you are the sovereign Lord and that nothing is impossible with you. We commit ourselves to you tonight. We commit this service to you. We commit everyone concerned and everyone to whom we are connected. We ask, Lord, that you will not restrain your blessings from us, but you will lavish your blessing and your favor upon your people. We thank you for victory. We take authority against the powers of darkness. We know that anything that is of God, he will try to resist. So tonight we take authority against the powers of darkness and we ask, Lord, that your will be done, your kingdom be established, and your purpose be manifested in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight I want to share with you for a few minutes on the theme, do not limit God. Do not limit God. Take the limitations of God. And also, in addition to that, you shall have what you say. Do not limit God. You shall have what you say. Reading from 2 Kings chapter 6, as Pastor Tyrone says, I, I, I teach the word, I preach the word. So, you know, I have to read the word. I can't do otherwise. Second Kings chapter 6, verses 24 to 33. And then we look at chapter 7, verse 1. Pastor Jasmine, Sister Rose, are you able to read for me? Let me know, please. Let me know if you're able to read for me. Second Kings 6. 24 to 33. I'm going to find, I can't find my glasses. Oh my God. Can Sister Nicola, Pastor Nicola, I can't find my glasses. Second, Second Kings. Pastor Nicola. Oh my God. All right. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Sister my Nicola. Glasses. He's able to read. He's able to read. You say Second Kings what? Second Kings, Second chapter, Kings chapter verse twenty four to thirty. Second Kings chapter. I didn't hear the chapter. Six. 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 Twenty four to thirty three. Okay. And it came to pass after this that Ben Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. And he said, if the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the 
barn floor are out of the wine press. And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, The woman said unto me, Give thy son, that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. And we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him. And she had hid her son. And it came to pass, when the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes and passed upon the wall. And the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Then he said, God do so more also to me if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, sta shall stand on him this day. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him, and the king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, See, we see ye how this son of a murderer had taken away mine head. Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door and hold him fast at the door, is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him, and he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord? And what should I wait for the Lord any longer? The word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. So let me read chapter 7, verse 1. Upon all that has taken place in chapter 6, chapter 7, verse 1 says, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, or look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, you shall see it with their, your eyes, but you shall not eat thereof. The word of the Lord. So, friend, here we are seeing a, 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 a narrative from the scripture. A very difficult time in some area, very difficult time in Israel. The Bible tells us that in the day of Elisha the prophet, remember this is Elisha who succeeded Elijah as prophet in Israel. It is this Elisha who asked Elijah for a double portion of his spirit or his anointing. At some point earlier, the king of Syria, Benadad, had sent to arrest Elisha. And the word of God tells us that his servant went out and saw that they were surrounded and he went back into the master and said, Master, we are sur surrendered. Elisha's servant was panic and Elisha just calmly says, Lord, open his eyes. And then he saw that there were angelic forces around the city protecting Elijah or Elisha. And the, 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 the observation was, those that are with us are more than they that are for our, for our, for our enemies. And... Um, the Bible tells us that after that, Elisha led them into the city of Samaria and he asked God to struck them with blindness. And, you know, he led them into the city and they were embarrassed and they had to go back to their master, um, demoralized and embarrassed. And so 
the king of Syria had an unresolved issue with Elijah, with Elisha and with Israel or Samaria. The capital of, of Israel at the time was Samaria. And so <clears throat> this provoked the king of Syria to set up a siege against the city of Samaria. In the days of Elisha the prophet, the Syrians invaded Samaria where Elisha lived. They besieged the city and cut off su supply of water, food, and trade. As a result, there was a famine in the land. And yes, we know in Jamaica, we have this expression that a hungry man is an angry man. So the Bible says that there was a severe famine in the land. Things got so desperate that even a donkey's head and dove's dung were on sale at high price. We read a very strange story a while ago that women were eating their babies. And when one woman had another woman's baby the day before, she hid her baby the next day. The king of Samaria at the time was Jeroam, J-E-H-O-R-A-M, Jeroam, blamed Elisha for the state of affairs. In other words, he concluded because Elijah had demoralized because Elijah had demoralized the Syrians sometimes before, that was what provoked the attack of the Assyrians, or by the Assyrians, or the invasion of Syria, or Samaria rather, by the Assyrians. So the king of Samaria, Jeroboam of Israel, Samaria, sent an executioner to kill Elisha the prophet. But the Lord revealed to Elisha exactly what was happening and told the men that were in the house with him to seize him or the executioner as soon as he entered the door. Upon this, Elisha got radical in verse 1 of chapter 7. It says, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Simply put, he was saying that in a in a in an economic situation where people are selling donkey's head at high price and dove's dung at high price. He's saying, in a matter of hours, tomorrow about this time, things are going to be radically changed that that which was scarce in supply is going to be in abundance so that the price will be affordable, significantly reduced. In fact, it, it wasn't just a situation where the things were available at high price like bar and flour, these things were not available at high price. These things were not available at all, so they could not be purchased, even by the rich. And so it had to be a miracle from God. It has to be something supernatural that has to happen in order to bring about the words or the saying of the man of God. The word of God tells us that when Elisha said those words to the king, a man, one of the king's supporter or armor bearer who stood by, spoke up in doubt and says, behold, in verse 2, chapter 7, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, that is Elisha now said, Behold, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat thereof. In other words, we'd say in Jamaica, you're not even going to get one dumpling out of this pot. What a, what a situation. 
Elisha got radical and rose up and declared tomorrow, chapter 7, verse 1, tomorrow about this time shall flower and barley be sold cheap, cheap in the gate of Samaria. And I want to say to us tonight, wherever you are, that it doesn't matter what things look like. It doesn't matter how dire things are or how desperate things become. God is looking for somebody who will rise up in their spirit and speak a word of faith and power over your situation and watch God work and watch things change. Remember the theme I'm sharing on tonight. Take the limit of God. Do not impose a limit of, of, of on God. And whatsoever you say, you shall have. You shall have whatsoever you say. Now, what I have noticed in this passage here is that when Elisha got up and spoke up, as soon as he spoke, as soon as he declared, as soon as he prophesied, things began to shift both spiritually and physically. Things began to shift both physically and spiritually. And sometimes you have a situation, and based on the desperate situation and the need and the dilemma that you're in, the easiest thing is to just confess what you see and talk what you see. But I say to us tonight as God's people, remember, we are people of faith. And the word of God says that you shall have what you say. Don't always need to confess what you see, but you should always confess what you desire. For you shall have the things that you say. I've noticed that there are two words in the scriptures that relate to time. To time. One word is the word chronos, from which we get the word chronology. It speaks to a space of time, whether measured by minutes, hours, days, weeks, years. Then there's another word for time. It's called kairos. K-A-I-R-O-S. It speaks to a season of change, a window of change created by the word of God and activated by the voice of faith. Created by the word of God and activated by the voice of faith. Here things were just going on, famine for months, Famine existed in Samaria. Life became miserable and unbearable. Things got so bad that people became cannibals. The king was frustrated. The king was now blaming the prophet Elisha. Everybody could, no one could help anybody because everybody was in the same crisis. But Elisha, the man of God, created what we call a Kairos moment by speaking forth a prophetic word that interrupted the Kronos. So the Kairos, the, 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 the moment of change, the window of change was created that interrupted the normal flow of activities. If Elisha had not spoken up, if Elisha had not intervened, the famine would have stayed longer. Things would have gotten worse more people would have died. And I'm saying to us as God's people tonight, some seasons are appointed by God. Come on now. In God's dealing with his people, there were certain seasons that were established like atonement and Pentecost. But there are some seasons that are not appointed by God. They are brought about by fate, the fate of the believer. And faith is voice activated. Some seasons are appointed by God. 
other seasons depend on us. The word of God says, as soon as Elisha prophesied, what did he say? Chapter 7, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. As soon as Elisha prophesied those words, the scene from inside the city changed to outside of the city. It's like a movie and the scene changes from what's happening inside the gate to what's happening outside the gates. Outside of the gate of the city of Samaria were four lepers. Those lepers were as desperate or probably more desperate than the people in the city. But God was going to use some very despised, rejected people to feed the city. And those were the four lepers. As soon as Elisha prophesied, the scene changed to where the four lepers were. They reasoned among themselves. They said, if we sit here, we're going to die. If we go into the city, the famine is in the city, are we going to die? Because people in there are perhaps worse than us out here. They said among themselves and agreed among themselves, if we throw ourselves into the hand of the Syrians, if they kill us, then that's it. But if we stay here, we're going to die slowly from starvation. They made a calculated risk. They stepped out in fate towards the camp of the Syrians who were outside the gate of the city of Samaria. These people laid siege to the city, brought their tents, lived outside of the city to make sure that those in the city, including Elisha, and including the people of Samaria, that they die for hunger and that they die for thirst. But as soon as those lepers started to walk, God did a couple of things for these lepers. Number one, he multiplied their footsteps and he amplified their footsteps. When the Syrians heard the four lepers walking towards the camp, they thought it was about three armies that the king of Samaria had hired to come against them. Why? God amplified the lepers' footsteps and multiplied them so that the army of the Syrians fled in terror, fled, fled frightened. And the word of God says they ran away leaving food and clothes and animals and tents and silver and gold. My God, you got to read the rest of chapter 7 mm -hmm. and see what happened. And the Bible says the the four lepers went into the camp of the Syrians. I'm telling you how God works, you know. Remember, people of God, we walk by faith and not by sight. This is how God works. If God says he's going to do something, it's not your business to figure out how he's going to do it. It's your business to trust him. Come on, tell yourself, it's my business to trust God and not to figure out how he's going to do it. There are some things about God that's predictable and there are other things about God that's unpredictable. Number one, God is predictable in that he will provide. Number two, he is unpredictable in terms of how he will provide. God is predictable in that he will protect you, but he's also unpredictable in terms of how he will protect you. God is predictable in that he will deliver you, but he's also unpredictable as to how he will deliver you. I hope you're getting the message tonight. Leave the how to God and just trust him. The word of God says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways that knowledge him and he shall direct thy path. The other thing I want you to observe tonight is that you do not, if you're praying about something and you're praying for God to deliver, you do not tell God who to use to help you. It was unforeseen, it was unpredictable that it would be the four lepers, the four guys that the people in the city kicked out. The rejects, the unclean, they were not supposed to be in the camp of Israel because they were leprous, they were considered unclean, and they were supposed to be in the colony of the lepers. 
But these were the strange people that God was about to use to feed the city. If God is going to provide for you, you don't determine who is going to be the waiter that he will use. Do you remember Elijah and the, at the brook chariot, how God used the vultures to feed him? If God is going to provide, it's not for you to tell God who to use to bless you. And after he left the brook chariot, he was sent down to Zarephath, but God says, I commanded a widow to sustain God. you. I need somebody to believe God tonight. Some of you have some situations right now, whether it is financial or material, or it is um, uh, relational, some situation that you need deliverance and breakthrough. I'm telling you tonight, do not put a limit on God. Say what you desire, Amen. for you shall have the things that you say. Confess the word of God over your situation. If the place is dark, don't say, my God, it's so dark. Turn on the light. Declare that God is light in your situation. Declare that I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the word and the works of the Lord. Praise Amen. God. Amen. God is going to ensure that you, are coming, you come out stronger and better out of your situation you're not going through this situation just for experience but you're coming out stronger you're coming out better you're coming out with a testimony praise god and so the word of god Amen. says as these men marched upon the camp of the syrians they fled leaving everything in fact when they when the four lepers made a couple of trips into the tents, they said, oh, we're not doing too well here, man. We, we better tell the city, the people in the city, what we have discovered outside of here. And when they went to the keeper of the gate of the city and told them that the Syrians have fled and there's a lot of food out here, the Bible says they didn't even believe. They didn't even believe. The king had to send out some emissary first to check it out and to investigate if it was true. You know when something is too hard to believe? It's too good to believe? How could it happen so fast? And how could it be so real? But remember what Elisha said. Tomorrow, about this time, food is going to sell cheap, cheap. Tomorrow? A place, a place where they were selling donkey's head and doves dung and cannibalism set in and people were eating their babies having baby stew my god god let me tell you something man it doesn't take long for god to do a great work i'm gonna ask you to declare that over your life Amen. right now it, it doesn't does take long for god to do a great work Hallelujah. God will do a great work in a short time. Yes. <laughs> oh God, let me I tell you something. If you are, if you truly read the Bible, if you go into the Bible by faith and read it for what it is, you can't come out reading the Bible without believing in a God of miracles. If you really read the Bible with an open mind, you cannot come out believing you cannot come out believing or not believing in a god of miracles our god is a god of the miraculous he's a god of the supernatural and my bible tells me in mark chapter 1 verse 37 for with god nothing shall be impossible child of god all god is looking for tonight is for somebody who will dare to believe him and somebody who will say if god says it that settles it god is looking for someone who will say Amen. god is not a man that he should lie neither is he the son of man that he should repent whatever god has spoken he's going to bring it to pass whatever he said he's going to make it good so the bible says the city became aware that the syrians had fled leaving their clothes leaving silver gold beast of burden their horses their donkeys and they had fled in terror because they thought they would 
were under a night attack by three armies hired by the king of Samaria. But it was only four lepers that God used. But God multiplied their footsteps and amplified Amen. Them. Glory be to God. And believers, when the whole city realized that food was outside in abundance, they broke open the gate. Oh my God, if I was there, I would run. If I was there, I would run. I mean, people were starving. People were dying. And food was outside of the city in the camp of the Syrians who maliciously shut down the economy in Samaria, cut off water supply, cut off food supply, wanted the people of God to die slowly. But there is a wealth transfer that was about to happen for the people of God. Didn't the Bible say that yeah. wealth wicked? Come on now. This was wickedness. This was evil for people to starve a city and watch people resort to killing their babies to survive for another day and god says i will give to you the wealth of the wicked hallelujah i want somebody to declare Amen. that right. god make it rich and he added no sorrow to it there are some there things, are some things that are in the hand of the evil, locked up in the hand of the wicked. Let me tell you something. Everything that you need right now, brothers and sisters, it's already on earth. It is somewhere in the UK, somewhere in Jamaica, somewhere in the yes. US, wherever you are. Whatever you need is in the earth realm, but it is yes. tied up. It is held up. It is locked up. I hear the psalm, it says, I think it's Psalm 78, somewhere there. It says, let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our God, shall bless us. So there are ways that we can unlock and unearth the blessing, and one such way is to declare prophetically over a dire situation over a frustrating situation over a desperate situation prophesy like ezekiel prophesy to the deadness prophesy to the dry bones and command life to come into it elijah prophesied that things are going to change in a matter of hours and it happened you too can prophesy and i'm mm -hmm. commanding you tonight in the authority of jesus christ Whatever you're seeing, whatever you're experiencing, don't confess it for what it seems to be. Confess what you desire to happen. The word of God Amen. says you shall have what you say. What things soever you, pray, you desire when you pray. What things soever you desire when you pray. Believe and it shall be yours. Mm -hmm. I charge you God tonight. I challenge you under God tonight to prophesy to your situation and also learn to worship and praise God in your situation because when you do that, when you prophesy to your situation and your worship in your situation, it changes the atmosphere. And when the spiritual is affected, it trickles down like a ripple effect and touching all other aspects of life. I'm challenging you tonight, God's people, with God. Nothing is impossible. Don't put a limit on God. You can interrupt the chronological flow of his events by creating a Kairos moment, by speaking forth the word of God over your situation. Say what God says. It's the highest form of prayer. Say what God says. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. The word of God says, let the weak say, I am strong. And sometimes you're going through the situation and you feel weak. But the Bible didn't say you should say you're weak. It says, let the weak say, I'm strong. Right now, you might be having some financial struggles and difficulties. The Bible never says you should say that you're broke. It says, let the poor say, I am rich. Yes. I am the message positive. Tonight. The highest yes. form of prayer is to say the word, say what God says. Because God watches over his words to perform it. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Thank you, Jesus. Say what God says. Prophesy. Declare the word of the Lord. And create a Kairos moment in your situation. Not all seasons. Some seasons are planned by God. Some seasons are brought about by your fate. Activated by, by your voice you shall have what you say mm -hmm. do not put a limit on god declare 
what it is that you desire, not just what you see or what you feel, but declare what you desire. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be open. I leave one last word with you tonight. With God, nothing shall be impossible. With God. Come on, say that after me tonight. We can keep your mind muted and say that tonight. With God, all With things God. are possible. Nothing shall be impossible. What about the What about the business idea that you have? What about the things that are in your heart that you desire to see manifested? Sometimes it takes long. Sometimes you have even forgotten about it and you have stopped praying about it. But if God placed it there, it will not leave. It will keep coming back. Believe God. Because it is God's power that will make it happen. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. God bless you tonight. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your words. We thank you for your precious people. I pray that their faith will not fail. But they will grow in faith and they will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ that come against all forms of doubt and unbelief. May your people rise up in their faith, rise up in their spirits right now and believe you, God, for the super and the impossible. But that which seems impossible to man is very possible with God. For with God, all things are possible. We thank you right now, God, for a Kairos moment interrupting the natural flow of events in the Kronos experiences of our lives. We thank you for the victory. We take authority against the forces of darkness. And we declare over your people tonight, Lord, that no weapon that is formed against your people will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we condemn in the authority of Jesus' name. We declare that you are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. That is who you are tonight. We thank you for doing it again. Lord, we do not put a limit on you tonight, but we believe your God that you are causing your grace to abound on our behalf. We might have all sufficient. We give you all the praise and all the glory and the honor because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God. Thank you. Open your mic. Hallelujah. My God, I don't know if you walk on this platform with a testimony, a testimony with a prayer request, but I think we already hear a formula to say, I am whatsoever we say. We shall have. My God, we want to bless you tonight, uh, Rev. Pastor Carl Dyer, for such a profound word. A word that is the uh, man i was just sitting there and i was just getting ready <laughs> for <Amen>. more <laughs> what a word today come on somebody say bless the man of god hallelujah and mute your mic and just put some blessings on the man of god Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bishop Michael Johnson, will you just pray for God's servant as he have poured out tonight on God's people? What a word, what a word. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. 
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, it, it is always a privilege and a pleasure to listen to Bishop Dyer as he ministers and teaches the Word of God. Yes. It is always a pleasure. And tonight we want to pray for his strength and that God will just rejuvenate his servant. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Hallelujah. One writer says, Lord, 